Hi guys and welcome to this eighth video in the But How Do It Know companion video series and today we're going to be talking about the bus. So um, as John explains in the book on um, page 42, uh, the bus is really a collection of eight wires that is used to connect uh, a series of different components together so that they can communicate and exchange data. So uh, on our uh, project here, we're not going to use wires to uh, to make our bus, but we're going to use uh, the rails that are on the side of these breadboards here. So if you like fold them off like this, you can break off the, these rails. And if you use um, a utility knife, you can cut them off as such. And then you can come and attach them to uh, another breadboard uh, on the top like this. So we're going to do this for uh, the two other breadboards here. And this will give us four rails that are going to be running in parallel off the top here. And these will become uh, the bus for our board uh, in our project. So once that is done, you can also connect we're going to connect the breadboards together uh, as such and create a big surface that we're going to flip over, remove this um, paper here, and we'll be able to stick it down on our board and have a nice stable surface to work on. So I'm going to go and do this and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so I went and finished this off. So uh, we now have our four breadboards. They're glued to uh, this plank here. We have our four rails on top that are going to comprise our bus. For now, we're only going to be working on this first half of the project. But when we bring in the second half, we're going to have the same four rails on top here that are going to prolong our bus. Uh, we're going to connect both together here using uh, some jumper wires. So one of the important things to understand about uh, a data bus is that you can only have one component that is outputting values on the bus. So if you have say four or five registers here that are connected to the bus, only one at a time can be outputting to it and uh, the others can read obviously uh, if they want to, but there is only one that can be um, outputting and that's actually um, uh, easier said than done because uh, in the book and in John's design there is a, a little simplification that he made to keep things uh, easier to understand but that cannot work in um, with real hardware like we're doing here so we're gonna take a little break here and gonna go look at some theory around um, uh, high impedance and uh, tri-state uh, values Okay, so I've uh, created a test bench uh, circuit here that we will use to simulate uh, multiple um, devices connected to a bus. So our bus will be um, this uh, rail here, uh, the red one, going uh, all the way down here up to this LED. Uh, what I have connected to it is a couple of things. So hopefully you will uh, recognize our 1-bit memory circuit right here. So what we've done a bit differently in this case is um, we've connected the set input of the one bit memory to five volts. So the effect that this has is uh, it makes the input of our one bit memory go straight through to uh, its output. So uh, I've done this to just uh, uh, make it a bit simpler to, to, uh, to work with the circuit. The second thing that I've done is uh, added this uh, switch here that is connected to ground on one side connected to 5 volts on the other side and um, the middle pin which uh, the switch connects to ground or 5 volts depending where it is is used as the input to our um, 
uh, one bit memory. So this will make it easier to switch the input from 0 to 1 without having to keep a finger on the button like uh, what we do with these push buttons here. So our one bit memory is here. What we have in the middle here is uh, basically two uh, ena enabler circuits, one on the left and one on the right. So the left part is uh, used as the enabler for this one bit memory here, and the right part is used as the enabler for this one bit memory here, which is exactly the same as this one here. So we have our two enablers, each has its push button to send the um, enable uh, signal to it, uh, here through these orange wires. Um, each also has a green wire that connects it to our bus. So uh, with this uh, setup here, we basically have two, uh, two one-bit registers, if you want, connected to our bus. Finally, we have an LED here that's going to uh, help us visualize what is um, being output on the bus. So if I power this up, So uh, both inputs of um, the one-bit memories are set to ground, and both enables are um, di disabled, if you want, because I'm not pushing on the buttons. So we have nothing going on here uh, on the ground, on the bus, excuse me. So if I turn on one of the one-bit memories, so now, because the S uh, signal is tied to 5 volts, uh, the one value should propagate through the one bit memory and come out here. So if I press on this button, we see that the LED is turning on. So, so far so good. Now if uh, we try the same thing with our other one bit memory, it should be the same, right? We turn this on here and we enable it. We see that the LED is still turning on. So uh, it seems like both these devices can be connected to the bus and uh, they uh, are able to um, send each, each of them, send a signal whenever uh, it needs to. But we'll see that this is not exactly the case. And uh, to show you a bit why, I will push on both of um, these buttons at the same time. So if I press 1, you see the LED is on, but if I press 2, you see that the LED is much brighter, right? So, so why is that? Uh, and the idea is that when you no button is activated, both of these AND gates here are asking, can I, I want to put this, a zero value on this bus. So they agree uh, and the value goes to zero. When we press only one, basically this uh, enabler here is saying, I want to drive the, the bus with a one value, but the other one is saying, I want to drive the bus with a zero value. So there is a conflict there. And uh, so it turns out that this will give us some kind of unpredictable value. Now with our human eyes, we still see the LED um, turning on. So it doesn't seem to be that uh, bad if, if we do this, but uh, if we're seeing this from the perspective of uh, a logic gate, uh, the voltage that's coming here will be uh, unclear if it's uh, intended to be a zero uh, signal or a one signal. And when we push both buttons at the same time, we're really sending one asking each of these enablers to send a one value to the bus and both agree and we get our full voltage over on uh, uh, the LED. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to hook up an oscilloscope to this and uh, we'll be able to see uh, a bit more uh, in detail what's going on. Okay, so what I've done here is uh, I've disconnected the output of the second enabler from our bus uh, and I've also hooked up uh, our, our test bench here to this uh, oscilloscope that I have. 
So uh, I connected the ground and the bus rail to it. And now it's giving me a reading of uh, zero volts because uh, none of the enablers are activated. So if I take uh, the input of uh, this first one bit memory here, put it to one and uh, engage the enabler, I'm going to give it a couple of pulses here. Uh, hopefully you can see on the screen that uh, they're registering. And they are registering actually around this height here. If I keep it pushed down, I can see on the display that it's telling me that it's reading 5 volts. So everything is uh, working as we'd expect here and our LED is turning on as well, uh, nice and bright. So I'm going to connect now the second enabler um, to the bus. So uh, we're still getting a reading of zero here, but if I press on uh, the push button to uh, enable uh, the first one bit memory, I'm going to send a few pulses here again. You can see that we're reading um, uh, a value that's different uh, from before and it's much lower. If I hold it down here, we can see the line is here instead of being all the way up here. And on the display, it's telling me that it's reading 2.5 volts. So I'm not a, an electrical engineer, uh, and I'm not really sure how to explain in detail what's going on here. But uh, my guess is that when we press the button, we're telling via this wire to our bus, I would like to output 5 volts, please. And in, in this wire, since we're not e e enabling it, we're telling to the bus, I would like to output zero volts, please. So the bus is getting two different demands from two different devices to uh, to set itself to two different values. So I'm guessing in this case, it's sort of finding a kind of compromise in the middle at uh, 2.5 volts. And uh, we can see when uh, we enable it this way, I don't know if you can see on the video here, but the LED here is quite a lot less bright than it was uh, when we had only one device because it's getting only half the voltage to light up so we might say okay but it's still lighting up right so what's what's the big deal as long as we can tell the difference between zero and one uh, it's fine but if you take the perspective of a logic gate that's connected to this bus the logic gate is expecting zero volts to mean uh, zero and 5 volts to mean a 1 value. And now we're sending it something in, the, in between at 2.5 volts. So how is it supposed to react? Is it supposed to consider this value as a 0 or as a 1? And uh, it basically it's, it's unclear for it. So uh, it's not defined how it will react. So we don't want that, right? We want the bus to have a clear uh, value of 0 or 1 at all times so that whoever is reading from it uh, will get uh, the good data. Uh, so what we really want from our enabler is something that's called tri-state logic and that means that uh, the device can output either a 0 or a 1 or it can uh, disconnect itself basically from the bus and, and indicate I'm not interested in outputting anything at all at the moment. Uh, I, I don't want to interfere with the bus. So by using an AND gate as an enabler like John did, uh, we cannot achieve this. And uh, when I first um, talked to John about um, creating a hardware implementation, implementation of his design, he mentioned that to me. He mentioned that that was part of uh, the liberties that he took when he wrote the book in order to keep uh, things simpler uh, is to omit the, the, these, these kinds of details. And he, he talked to me about tri-state logic and um, how that had to be dealt with when uh, we're going to build um, the circuit for real. So uh, now I'm going to rewire this and basically have some kind of simulation for uh, the tri-state uh, logic of the enabler and uh, we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so what I've done here is, is remove uh, all the AND gate uh, logic um, associated with uh, the enablers and replaced them simply with uh, these two push buttons. 
So the outputs of our 1-bit memories are coming here, and when we're not pressing on the buttons, they are completely disconnected from the bus. When we press the button, uh, the, the output gets sent to the bus. So now we have a reading of 0 when nothing is enabled. Both of these are, are 1. So uh, we can uh, press here, we see the LED turns on, and we can see we get our nice 5-volt uh, signal here. Same thing if we use the other one. Uh, we got our nice LED and uh, our uh, signals going uh, firmly into the 5 volt uh, area. So the uh, one thing that we need to consider when we hook up things to the bus this way is that when we are not pressing any buttons or nobody is enabling on the bus, it's not being driven and it's essentially floating. So in order to make sure that when there's nobody outputting on the bus, it doesn't read a one value accidentally, because there are cases in uh, John's design where it assumes that uh, the bus will be zero when nobody is enabling on it. I've added a pull down uh, resistor here to the bus, which uh, makes sure that if there's no current on the bus, it will be connected to, to ground. But if anybody is trying to send uh, some current to it, uh, it will let it go through. So uh, it turns out that the chips that we're going to be using to uh, make uh, our, our registers, the SN74HC373, uh, uh, their enabling circuit is actually uh, uh, built around uh, tri-state logic and will give us the equivalent of what we're looking at here. We will also be using in the project the Arduinos to, uh, to output values to the bus and they too, uh, using uh, the pin modes that are built in the Arduino, uh, can have the same, same effect. So when you use an Arduino, each pin, you can tell it that it's in output mode or in input mode. And when you put it to input mode, uh, it's basically uh, setting itself in what's called a high impedance state where it can read what's happening on the bus, but it's not driving it with either 5 volts or ground. So in all cases, we'll be covered and we'll be able to have a nice stable bus that will only uh, be uh, driven by one of the components and the others can read from it if they want to. So... <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.